Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome in to a Friday championship weekend, best bets edition of Snaps. Hope you're having a wonderful Friday. Uh, I know I am, guys. Uh, I just had a kid. Uh, it was an incredible morning. Um, finally figured out the sex of my baby. Uh, super excited about, you know, uh, the sex. And uh, it's just really fantastic. <laughs> To have a new child on this earth. Uh, and and the only thing, in fact, that could make it more fantastic would be to gamble on some games this weekend on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Uh, what's up, by the way? This is Snaps. Uh, I'm one of your hosts, T-Bob Baber, joined, as always, by UGA and SEC legend Aaron Murray. What's up, Aaron? Hey man, the dedication uh, between both of us—I'll give us both props. I yeah. what uh, two days after my wife gave uh, birth to our second child, did, jumped on a show with you. You the same damn day. Look at that. Come in like you took Left it to another her. level. Like you're like you're like I'm not gonna let Aaron one up me. I'm actually gonna go the day of birth. I'm gonna go and and do a show. So big props to you, T Bob, for showing up doing your thing. I think it's because you know we we both need that diaper money. We need the diaper money. Yeah. FanDuel, let's go. Let's go make some money this weekend. Pay for some some dirty diapers. I mean, look, also new babies are pretty dumb and boring. This kind of sit there. Yeah, so I left her ass in the hospital, and I'm here to give you some best bets. And let's start with tonight's game, Pac-12 championship, playoffs on the line, USC minus two and a half going up against Utah. And uh, look, I've been a Le Petit Trojan boy all year long. I remain a Le Petit Trojan boy. I like the Trojans minus the two and a half here. Aaron, you know what they say? First off, it's hard to beat a good team twice, okay? Yeah. And USC the first time around loses by one in Utah at night. Two-point conversion. Very emotional night for the Utes. They were honoring a fallen teammate. Uh, the bottom line is it was a USC team that had a lot of the context and setting of the game working against it. This is a better USC team that is going to be facing off this time around. And Lincoln Riley may not be good at winning playoff games, but Lincoln Riley is very good at making the playoffs. Yeah. So I think that uh, that Lincoln Riley and company get it done and go back to the Pac-12 championship covering, or excuse me, go back to the playoff covering the two and a half. Yeah, I'm with you on this one, too. Uh, with limited games this week, there's going to be, I think this is our one crossover game. We both feel good about it. I'm I'm on the petite Trojan boy side. Uh, I'm with T-Bob. Uh, for those who don't know, two weeks ago, T-Bob was gracious enough to welcome me back into the warm, warm, cuddly arms uh, and big hairy chest that he has. Uh, this is a team playing with so much more confidence right now on both sides of the football. And and I'll start first with Caleb Williams. He is He's a superstar. He is the best player in college football. He will only further cement him being the Heisman Trophy winner after the game tonight. And honestly, even if, if they lose the game, I don't know who else is going to win the Heisman. I think everyone has literally fallen off the face of the earth. This is going to be the easiest Heisman to ever vote for. Just put Caleb Williams on the ballot, one, two, and three if you can. Uh, he is playing at an all-time high right now. The confidence, the, the, the pocket mobility, the running the football, the throwing the football. I don't think they'll be stopped. He wasn't stopped the first game. He's definitely not going to be stopped. In this game, the focus is not going to be on offense. It's going to be on, as we always focus on, USC and their defense. You go back to the first matchup, Dalton Kincaid, the tight end, the stellar tight end for Utah, went off. Had a game that most tight ends in the country would be happy for if it was their entire season. 16 catches, 234, and a touchdown. 16 catches, 234, and a touchdown. I mean, like I said, some tight ends in the country would die to have those stats in just the, the entire football season. Let's go back to last week for USC, the game versus Notre Dame, because Notre Dame has one of the best tight ends in America as well, Michael Mayer. Michael Mayer had eight catches, 98 yards, and two touchdowns. I love the two touchdowns, but they, 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 they held them to half the catches that Dalton did. So I think you kind of have a somewhat similar game plan and maybe try to do even a little bit more to slow down the tight end position. I think this is a defense that obviously feasts on turnovers. Um, it's just a low amount of points, two and a half, for a game that's in a neutral yeah. site. I think everything was going for Utah that first game. At home, they don't lose at home. Um, honoring a fallen uh, a brother, uh, a fallen teammate, a lot of emotion in the game, two-point conversion to win it. Like, a lot had to go yeah. Utah's way to win it. 
you're at neutral site once again. I think USC is playing better on both sides of the football than they played this entire season. I think the Trojans win. I think Trojans win in a big way too. Yeah, maybe the only thing that gives me pause is that the Pac-12 has made a bit of an art form of uh, beating yeah. themselves out of the playoff. Uh, but again, Lincoln Riley hasn't been there before. So USC minus two and a half, a double snap certified double stamp pick of the week starting tonight. Can't wait to watch that game. Uh, coming up on Saturday, uh, my first pick, I'm going to go, Aaron, with the team that is tied for number one in the country in terms of record against the spread this year. Do you know who that would be? Who would be playing here on championship weekend that is 10 and two against the spread on the year? Uh, I'm guessing a group of five team. I'm going to throw out Toledo. Uh, the two lane no. green wave. Uh, so okay. What, what did we just say in the USC game? Okay. First off, Hard to beat a good team twice, okay? Just yep. a few weeks ago, the Gus bus rolled into Yolman in New Orleans. They end up beating Tulane. UCF does 38-31. It's a game in which it was kind of like a blitzkrieg early from the Knights, and then Tulane kind of stabilized, and they were coming back, and they essentially just ran out of time, right? Uh, I do not think that Tulane will allow themselves to be jumped on in the same way this time around. Mm -hmm. I also think that like if the news had stayed true that Willie Fritz was leaving, going to Georgia Tech, there's absolutely no chance I would be choosing Tulane to cover the three and a half here. But with the news that Fritz is returning, I think you get a little like rubber band effect where then the hype and the buy-in and the excitement gets even further than what it would have been. And the bottom line is I think that Tulane – crashes the Gus bus. Okay, I think they get revenge for that first game where it looked like they figured things out as the game went on. I think it starts more like that. They've been excellent. Again, 10-2 and two against the spread all year long. Give me the two-lane green wave minus the three-and-a-half against the UCF Golden Knights. All right, I'm going to go to a game that is near and dear to our heart. Right now, Georgia, SEC Championship getting 18, and are not getting, but are uh, giving LSU 18 and a half points. I like the dogs in this one. I like the dogs in a big way. I think the dogs flex their muscles as they move on to be the number one team, continue to be the number one team in the country as they head into the playoffs. Uh, LSU is just, they've, they've, they've what? over exceeded what, what What is LSU just? Say some. Say some. I will say, I'm about to say something. I'm about to right now. I'm going to bow up. If only you would have told your wife to to mix up the day so you could be here so I could bow up to your face because I would gladly bow up to those little hand face of yours. Um, You'd be looking up like uh, this, dude. <laughs> I would be looking up like this. I would be your big man. <laughs> All right. But I do feel a little bit comfortable knowing that there's just a camera between you and I uh, and you're in, you're in Baton Rouge. Uh, Aaron does have a, a uh, hairier chest. He has a hairier chest than me for whatever that is worth. It is very manly. A much hairier chest. All right, Georgia, 18.5 point favorite versus LSU. Uh, listen, I've talked to guys on the Georgia roster this week, and 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 the sense of urgency after what happened last year of of being the heavy favorites to beat uh or excuse me, Alabama in the SC championship game, and then to get blown out the way they did to get embarrassed in Atlanta in front of I would say about 80% Georgia fans in Mercedes-Benz Stadium. That is something they did not forget. They had almost had a perfect season. They want that perfect season. And the SC Championship is the second best thing you can get besides winning a national championship. They want that banner. They want that banner in Sanford Stadium. They want that banner and that trophy in Butts Mir, uh in the facility. So I think but, you're going to get it. Tina, I knew you are going to laugh. You're so immature. Butts 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 Mir. Wait, 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 Butts wait, wait, wait. You've never heard of that. Wait, it's it's, it's wait, two coaches, up. Butts Mir. B U T T S Mir M E H R E. You're just so effing immature. I knew like, I uh, knew you were gonna laugh. No, when I said that. dude. No, 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 no. Time out. I mean, maybe Brum, you can step in as a neutral arbiter here, but Mir is that's a purposeful joke. Like, like somebody wrote that. That's like um, it's a Seymour Butt situation, yes. yes <laughs> or Dixie yes, Normus, uh, similar Jack, thing. Like Mehoff sort of deal. Like Correct. there's no way you had two codes, especially because the S is on the butts. It's not smear. It's butts mirror. That's the height of comedy. I love it. You know what? It's, Truth it's, is stranger than fiction. Uh, I think, too I, think bad, I got T-Bob on board now. I think you're going to be, 
No, I, th I, th I think you're going to be feeling like a little butt smear after uh, you fail no. to hang that no. SEC title up there after this weekend. I, I listen. There, there, there are rumors that that Jaden was in a boot to start the week. I just, if he ain't healthy shit. and if he can't run the football, yeah, shit's right. If he can't run the football, this offense will not have success. Um, they're going to have to expose the plays. They are literally going to have to just take chunk play after chunk play after chunk play. And if Tennessee couldn't do it, I do not have faith that LSU will be able to do it as well. So, uh, listen, congratulations to LSU. You made it. But I think this is obviously the end of the rope. Look at what they've done the past two weeks. Just they're kind of – I think they, they capped out. They maxed out. They're exhausted. And now they're about to face a team that is, is just better than them, that's deeper than them and that wants it just a little bit more because of what happened last year versus Alabama. So I think Georgia rolls uh, by three touchdowns in this one. Damn. All right. Well, we're mm. going to find out uh, this Saturday. My third and final best bet of the week, uh, TCU minus two and a half against Kansas State. Again, when you're talking about TCU, the third best cover team against the spread in the entire country, nine, two, and one against the spread this year and check it out it, you know what first off aaron it's not that hard to beat a good team twice okay that's a stupid old cliche in fact i don't know who would ever say that it's really not that tough to beat a good team twice tcu already handled kansas state earlier in the year 38 28 they're going to handle them again and you say oh but t bob adrian martinez started the game and then he got hurt and then will howard had to play and then he got hurt and they had to put in the other quarterback for a bit well guess what adrian martinez is hurt again and it's going to be Will Howard again. And and yes, fair. Kansas State is hot right now. Okay. Uh, they're four and one since that TCU game. They're scoring 40 points a game. They've only allowed a total of 15 second half points in those five games. That's of note because TCU put up 21 alone in that second half. But look, this TCU team, the hypno toad, it's a team of destiny. OK, and destiny is stronger than Chris, Chris Kleeman, Deuce Vaughn's tiny little uh, Darren Sproles, Kirkland brand ass like, no, get the hell out of here. Will Howard ain't that guy. Mad Max Duggan is. Give me TCU. Very small number. Minus two and a half. Horn Frogs going to the playoff. They're going to the playoff regardless of what happens. I think Kansas State wins this game, but TCU will still be in the playoffs at the end of the day. All right, my last best bet of the afternoon Why is... Why do you think Kansas State wins a game? Oh, well, okay, whatever. It's fine. Well, 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 for those who watched the show yesterday, go back and watch the show from yesterday. You'll yeah, see why exactly. I pose, Yeah, why I pick Kansas State. All right, uh, Michigan versus Purdue. Give me Michigan 16.5 points. I remember last year's Big Ten game, it was like, oh, Michigan's in it, but you know, Iowa, let's we love Iowa, and Iowa's gonna find a way to make it a close game. Michigan just beat the crap out of them 42 to 3. So I think people are trying to find ways to make it seem like Purdue has a shot to make this thing interesting. But this is just an, this is a really good Michigan team. This is the number two team in the country. And they proved a lot to me last week that they are, you know can throw the ball maybe a little bit better than I thought. I think a little has to do with, like I said earlier in the week, Ohio State and those DBs were just horrendous and guys running wide open. But we know they're dominant up front, one of the best offensive lines in America. I think J.J. gained a lot of confidence from his performance last week versus Ohio State on the road. And then this defense continues to impress week in and week out. So, Purdue, congratulations. You won one of the worst divisions in all of America. But now you're about to face the number two team in America. And they showed that they, don't, they ain't going to look ahead. Um, and I think they want to also make a statement too that hey, if if Georgia kind of looks suspect versus LSU, which I'm not anticipating happening, but if they do, if Michigan moves, you know, wins in a big way, does the committee move Michigan ahead of Georgia? I don't think it happens, but I think in a mindset for them, that's a little bit of motivation as well. Michigan just demolishes Purdue. Give me the 16 and a half points. All right, so there it is, your Friday Snaps Championship Weekend Best Bets Edition. Both the boys are on USC minus 2.5. Then I got the Green Wave minus the 3.5 and, and TCU minus 2.5. Aaron, what were your last two? All right, my last two, Dim Dogs, <laughs> uh, minus 18.5. And, and then Michigan, six getting, or, uh, Michigan giving Purdue 16.5. I like Michigan with that. Uh, and there it is. A uh, huge shout out to FanDuel, FanDuel Sportsbook. Up, download it. Uh, use the promo code SNAPS. 
Um, a, you get great sign-up deals when you do. You also let them know that you like snaps, and uh, that's great for us. Uh, shout out to Uncle Colin and uh, the Volume Sports uh, Network for having us here. Like it, subscribe. Hey, please, please, please sub to the pod, rate it, yep. review it, share it with your friends if you enjoy it because we freaking love it. Uh, I better get back to the hospital now. Um, I think my wife's going to be pretty pissed. Uh, maybe I can get back before she wakes up. But uh, y'all have a great day, and uh, we'll see you on the other side of all this for some more snaps.